What's up everybody, Tech Chucker here, and today I'm gonna to show you how I made my deadbolt and doorknob. This is a 1 12th scale door that I picked up at uh, Hobby Lobby, and the doorknob is completely made from scratch. Hopefully you can see. There we go. So I'm gonna show you how I made that. Pretty much all you need, ruler, uh, pencil, Exacto blade of some sort, hole punch, some paint. Uh, I don't have my black paint, but you're going to need a black uh, paint as well. And then a uh, uh, this is just a bamboo skewer for cooking. And this is a granola bar box. So that's oh, and you need a hot glue gun. Mine is a low temp, though it's still warm. So that's pretty much all you need to uh, to make this thing. Oh, and you're going to need a tiny chunk of some of this uh, foam, purple or whatever, pink foam. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So basically, what I did is I had to measure. Uh, I wanted to measure out how wide this part is between the panel that way then let's see if i can focus no focus all right that way then i have a little bit of a gap and i've already measured that on my on my board here or on my on my board on my uh, cardboard so i i brought that in about two millimeters that way then i'd have about a millimeter on each side to work with and then i figured that it's about uh, a one inch tall because it's probably about a one foot uh, plate. So then I can go ahead and I should probably use my ruler. Where did I put that? I'll use my ruler and my exacto and go ahead and cut that. All right. So I've basically got my base. Should be good there. Let's see if my lighting's terrible. Okay, so I can double check. So this this doorknob is going to go on the inside of my door. I can go ahead and check to see if it has lined up the way that I want it to. Looks good to me. So. Now, all I need to do oops, is knock my tools down. So now I'm going to take my hole punch, and because I want to make it look nice, I want it to have kind of a nice little edge or nice corners up at the top here. So I'm just going to take my hole punch, and now you could measure where you want your um, edges to be. I'm not going to. I don't. I just kind of eyeball it. I'm just going to snip off those corners. Be real careful that you don't take too much and don't take not enough. So you now that not entirely even, not terrible though. Maybe I'll just take a little bit more off on this one. Yeah. All right. So I'm just doing that on all my edges. Try and get it a little more even. So if you happen to notice that I am sweating profusely, it is because this is one of our hottest days in Minnesota. Yes, we do get hot days in Minnesota. And I am stuck in my garage doing this. So it's probably over 100 degrees in here with humidity and everything. All right, so that's going to be good enough for me because this is going to be on the inside of the door. It's only going to be viewed if I open that door for pictures or anything like that. So I'm happy with that. All right, next up we're going to make the deadbolt. And I've already cut out a little small square. Let's see if I can focus in on that. 
of just this pink insulation foam. It's really small. I didn't measure it because I really don't particularly care how big or how perfect this is. Um, but it's probably, I don't know, close to five millimeters thick and five millimeters square. Um, so basically, and I forgot to mention, you will need some sandpaper to do this, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to trim the corners off so that way then I don't have to sand entirely. And this is just, you're just gonna trim a little bit to get started making that, that uh, circle. I'll try not to make too many shadows while I do this. I really gotta work on my lighting. I can't do this in the house right now because the kids are watching a show and all you would hear is the show and my kids yelling and complaining and whatever they're doing. All right, so it's not perfect by any means and neither is this video, but you get the point. So now basically all I do is I'm just gonna carefully sand this a little bit smoother and this is just like a 200 grit sandpaper that I have laying around. I seem to have this stuff laying around everywhere. And like I said, it doesn't need to be perfect. Just kind of sand the edges to try and get some of those sharp edges off. Now mind you, before you start all of this, it'd be good to have your um, to have your hot glue gun plugged in already so that once you've got all this ready, you can just jump right into gluing it on. So to get a realistic look, you might want to taper that just a little bit so that it's narrower at the top. And you can see this isn't the easiest thing to do because it's pretty tiny, but you can get pretty close. And like I said, it doesn't need to be super exact because most people aren't gonna look that close at it. At least, I hope they don't. All right, so mine isn't completely flat. When I cut it out, I'm going to flatten it. All right, so for my purposes, I am happy with this. So I'm gonna go ahead now and glue this on. I'm just gonna get this last little hunk. Yeah, see, you can probably see my sweat dripping. It's disgusting. All right, so I'm gonna take my base plate piece that I already did, and I'm going to set it down here, and I am going to carefully take and dab just a tiny little bit of glue on. And when I put it on, let's see if I can show you. I'm gonna put it on, and I'm gonna try and flatten it just a little bit, the glue. That way then I don't get that much glue. And you're gonna have to do this kind of quick and pop it on, press it in. And anybody who's worked with hot glue knows that you're gonna get those weird little string things. But do your best to try and get this centered and near the top, like so. And you may need to use your exacto which i can't find mine oh here it is yeah i need to clean up my mess here i wasn't planning on doing this video right now but i had some time okay so that's that next up we're going to make the doorknob and that is a fairly tricky part and i forgot to mention you're going to want some sort of a knife. I use just a regular construction utility knife deal. And you're going to take your uh, bamboo stick. And um, I usually like to take this the sharp edge. It doesn't have to be a bamboo stick. It could be any, any wooden dowel of any sort. And basically, I just trim it down 
because the the diameter or the thickness of this particular um, bamboo stick is too thick for what I think would be the right uh, doorknob um, and essentially what this is going to become is if you can see on here God, it's so hot okay what it becomes is it becomes this portion and I don't know oops it's not even on camera it becomes this piece right here let's focus okay the piece between the knob and the door plate so that's what we're making right now and again this doesn't have to be perfect just you know close try and do this on camera so you can at least see what I'm doing uh, you do want to try and keep it straight when you're uh, doing your trim so you know keep it round and keep it straight as close as you can at least don't overdo it I may have overdone it ah, that's good okay and I just take some sandpaper and I'm gonna sand it twist it around so that that'll help give it a little bit more of that round uh, look because you do want it to look relatively natural Okay, so that's close enough. All right, so this is the hardest part. This is the part that you may find it's gonna take a few, a few tries, and that's okay, because this is pretty easy to start over. Basically, I just take, all right, let's do this on camera. Come on, man. Okay, so. What you're gonna do is you're going to slowly put a small bead onto the end, let it envelop the entire stick. Let it sit there a little bit. You may find that you have to twist it and that'll help to give it some of that round integrity. away now I like to twist because the weight of this it's going to kind of weigh down so then you're gonna get some uneven and blow on it just a little bit you want it to cool just a little before you kind of shape it to exactly the shape that you want if you're lucky which right now I'm kind of turning out pretty lucky here it might shape itself. So basically then what I do is once it's kind of cooled, you, you, wanna, you wanna wait for it to start clouding because the glue when it's fully dry, it has kind of a cloudy uh, look to it. Once it gets to that, then you can kind of use a harder surface to shape it. And then you can use your finger if you need to shape this thing so that it's just the way shape you want it to be and there you go I locked out and pretty much got it on the first try awesome okay so then we need to cut this to size or to length I guess I've got just a pair of scissors man I mentioned tools but I didn't mention them all at the, in the beginning so and then I just go ahead and clip this I clip it long so that way then I've got a little extra to work with all right so here is my doorknob focusing and it doesn't have to be perfectly round uh, unless you're a perfectionist of course but now I can take and I can compare and see, okay, how long do I want this to stick out from my uh, door plate? And obviously I don't want it to stick out that far. So I'm gonna trim this a little bit further. 
And I'm just using some utility scissors. And you're gonna just eyeball it a little bit. All right, so that looks pretty good. I might go a little shorter. I'm gonna go a little bit shorter, just a hair. There we go. And if it if it cuts a little bit uneven, you may need to trim a little bit of that because you do want to have a bit of a flat surface because this next process can be a little bit tricky. And I'm actually going to change camera angles for this one. All right, so here's a word of advice. Make sure you have plenty of space when you start doing a video. All right, so but this will be a good example. Um, so I already did this and you obviously didn't get to see it um, because I ran out of space. But if you mess up, which I kind of did because you'd see, maybe you can see, it's not very straight on there. So I want to redo this. And this is relatively easy if you're using the low temperature, uh, you can simply peel this off. Let's see if I can do this without blocking the light. I should be able to carefully peel that off. And of course I'm tearing a little bit of, and then just peel, being careful to only peel the piece off that you specifically want gone. And I'm gonna, again, shorten this little dowel piece because it was just a little too long for my liking as well. All right, so we're gonna try and do this. We're gonna try and do this on camera this time. All right, so basically you need to very carefully hold one end. See if I can do this with, without blocking my light as straight as you can, center it, and make a little blob in the center, gently lifting. And you want the center of the blob to be in the center of your door panel. And then you're gonna take your door knob and you can sort of manipulate that while it's still, you know, not completely dry. Do your best to get this straight. You're gonna to wanna to look at this at different angles. Slide it over a little bit so it's centered in that piece. Once you're happy with it, you can go ahead and start blowing on it to get it to cool a little bit faster. Now, I didn't get this perfectly centered, but again, this isn't gonna be my primary view of this, um, but you might be able to manipulate this over. I've got a little sculpting tool. I may have let it dry a little too soon or too quick. That's okay. I'm okay with how it looks. All right, so let's take a look. Here's my doorknob. We're not quite done yet because I want to have this deadbolt have a keyhole. And all you really need to do is take your X-Acto knife and cut a little slit right in there. And if you have a pencil handy, which I do, just like you do with your bricks, widen that just a little bit in there. So I am not going to show how to paint this, but all I did with mine is I painted mine with black. Let's see if you can see in here. Of course, you're not going to be able to. I need to change my view. All right, so I did a black primer and then I very, very carefully uh, lightly dry brushed with this metallic royal gold. Mm, get some light in here. It's really cheap stuff I got at Walmart. 
If you have the more expensive uh, acrylic, I would use that instead um, because you can't overwork that paint. Otherwise, it's just going to come off of your glue because the glue isn't going to hold that paint very well. And so if you overwork it, you're just going to rub all your black paint off and you're going to have to start over. So do it very, very gently. You're not going to dry your brush off like you normally would with your standard dry brush. You can with the card with the cardboard. You can do your regular dry brushing with the with the cardboard, but you can't with the glued parts. All right. So I hope this tutorial has been helpful, and uh, hopefully this, like I said, is gonna last. I like the way that it looks. So make sure you subscribe and take a look at some of my other videos. And until then, I'll see you later. Tetris Brain Blast.